In the five weeks since Expedition 47 got underway, the six crew members on board the International Space Station have been very busy with science research activities, and they have had a lot of opportunities to show the international part of this operation. And this morning, we're going to get a little overview of that research that's underway on orbit. Our guest this morning is uh, Yuri Gunart Ramirez, who is the Expedition 47 and 48 lead increment scientist. There's a, a lot of station science that uses the crew members themselves as test subjects, and Tim Copra and Tim Peak have been doing that for a, a number of weeks now. Tell me a little bit about the goals of, of some of these human life sciences experiments. Let's start with uh, just a couple of them called microbiome and cognition. Certainly. Uh, first, I just want to mention a little bit about how exciting it is for us to see completion of human research uh, investigations. Uh, as you may know, we consider our crew members our subjects, and it takes several subjects to achieve uh, statistical significance in order to be able to analyze the data. So, therefore, it's many years in the making for us to get a complete set of number uh, sub of subjects so that we can analyze the data and, and the scientists can, can have meaningful mm -hmm. results. Uh, a few of these are being completed with uh, this crew members uh, coming home and some of their data collections after. Uh, you mentioned cognition is one of those that uh, is also uh, coming to completion. It's very exciting to see that wrapping up. They are investigating how the environment of space and the stress-related environment, their sleep patterns affect the cognitive abilities. The crew members uh, perform a battery of tests that are um, designed to understand how those abilities related to problem solving, uh, creative thinking, and all sorts of these motor uh, skills are affected uh, during these conditions in microgravity. Because the conditions are there, it's not like they're on vacation and they're relaxing, they are under some stress. It is a very stressful, exactly, and all of these factors affect our, our natural ability to, to react. Another one that, that is called microbiome, and that has to do with their insides in a different way. That's right. Uh, we are uh, understanding the human body uh, as a, mi a microcosmos, if you would. So all of the different bacteria and creatures that live inside our bodies are uh, constantly uh, being maintained in balance. And that balance is what allows us uh, to be healthy, our immune system to kick into gear. And if anything gets a little bit off balance, then we're not able to cope with illness as well and we get, we get sick. So understanding the interactions of that microcosmos of the human body in relationship to the environment it's exposed to uh, it will yield uh, hopefully a better uh, understanding of how the immune uh, system gets affected and depressed when uh, crew members are in space. So uh, this investigation takes uh, samples from the human body and the environment to try to understand uh, how that is progressing through, through their microgravity stay. I mentioned that this is you know, an international effort. There's a, a Japanese experiment that's looking about how being in space affects the immune function, too. Um, what do the crew members do for, for this experiment called multi-omics? This experiment's a little bit different. It does look at the similar environment, in, a, in particular focusing in the, in the gut area of the body. But it is uh, trying to understand if feeding the body with prebiotics, which are essentially like the nutrients that a probiotic needs to be happy, which is your gut uh, flora to keep it healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we, if we adequately provide those nutrients, uh, would that increase the ability of that uh, gut flora to, to be happy, healthy, and therefore promote uh, a stronger health uh, in the immune system? And that's uh, part of what that investigation is trying to understand. In fact, is the European and the Canadian space agencies have some human life sciences experiments going right now, too. Uh, tell me about circadian rhythms and at home in space. How do, how do those fit into the effort to find out about what happens to people in weightlessness? Circadian rhythms is uh, an investigation that looks at your body and the impacts of your biological clock. So as we are conditioned uh, to the day-night cycles that we have here on Earth. Uh, some people may be familiar that on station, you have a day-night cycle every 90 minutes. And the hypothesis is to try to understand how that day-night cycle that is very different and irregular from what we experience naturally on Earth affects your whole biological clock. So they are conducting experiments to measure 
uh, your core body temperature uh, via thermal lab sensor that they place on, on the crew member's forehead and, and chest area. And that uh, temperature uh, recording allows them to correlate to melatonin, which is one of the most uh, studied hormones that are uh, uh, associated with the circadian rhythms uh, uh, process in the body. And the, and the other one, at home in space? And at home in space. Sounds quaint. It does. Uh, it is a little bit different looking at, at the psychosocial aspects. Uh, so we understand we have crew members um, that are in a confined environment. It's a stressful situation, as we've discussed. And you also have multi multicultural crew members coming together to make everything happen. So at home in space is proposing that one of the coping mechanisms that are possibly being developed naturally uh, is to develop an overarching space culture to help the crew members deal with that stress and have a coping mechanism. Uh, it also studies uh, their impacts uh, from uh, being away from home and their loved ones and their, their families back home. So it'll collect uh, questionnaires uh, through, through the process to try to understand whether this is, this is correct. And it, it is really interesting to see that it could have applications here on Earth, not just for f uh, people that are working and they're confined uh, and situations uh, even elderly that are confined mm. uh, to some some uh, uh, human living you know, living conditions that are are maybe not their homes they have to go into in a community living and if we understand how to develop that we may be able to provide it as a countermeasure to help people uh, achieve a better quality of life all of which is part of the effort to find out just what it's going to take to keep people well on long long missions of the future. Exactly, and that and that is a great space ap application as well. We mentioned earlier that there's another cargo ship launching to the station, the, the station later on today, and that it is carrying material for uh, experiments for this expedition and the next one. Uh, tell me about a, a couple of that you're particularly looking forward to, uh, the cargo going up on the Dragon ship today. Uh, as you said, there are uh, so many experiments coming out, it's really hard to to isolate a few, uh, so I'll just pick a few, uh, but a, a lot of the science is very exciting in, in the very uh, uh, various areas that we are investigating. Uh, we are coming, uh, bringing a, a several investigations from students uh, through the NanoRx program. There's also a new device called the Wet Lab RNA Smart Cycler, which is looking at the ability to extract RNA from biological samples while on station, and that will allow scientists to completely revolutionize the way we're doing biological science today. Right now we have to bring our samples home, keep them preserved at the right temperatures and conditions, uh, and this could open up some analyzing capabilities while on orbit. We also have uh, a couple of uh, international uh, investigations coming up, like the India, um, spheroids for ESA, excuse me, um, which is studying uh, the endothelial cells, uh, which are cells that are uh, found in the blood vessels, and it could potentially uh, lead to some revolutionary uh, tr medical treatments as well. We have JAXA bringing two uh, somewhat related cousin investigations, if you would, uh, plant gravity sensing and cell mechanosensing. It's a continued uh, series of investigations that is trying to understand how do plants, uh, at the cellular level, s sense gravity? So how do they know that they are not in the gravity? What are those uh, mechanisms that are altered at that cellular level uh, that therefore are having an impact on how they grow and, and similar to muscle type of cells with the cell mechanosensing? That could also yield potential treatments for some of the muscle uh, atrophy that we're seeing. Uh, we also have our three Eli Lilly bringing uh, from the NASA side of the house uh, big investigation that can help us understand uh, if we if we can devise a new mechanisms to help uh, countermeasure the muscle atrophy.